After being up 31 points to the Rockets in the first half, the Warriors ended up winning a nail-biter in overtime over the Houston Rockets. And one of the key revelations in this game late and early was the presence and prowess of Jonathan Kaminga. Welcome to The Clear Path, everyone. Today, we're going to go in-depth into what Jonathan Kaminga did this game that maybe points him towards an all-star trajectory and as the player that we needed in Golden State. On this first play right here, you're going to see that Jonathan Kaminga is essentially on the weak side of the ball, and Draymond Green is setting up for this kind of post-split action. We also have Buddy healed out here by the three-point line, and he's a great three-point shooter this season, leading scorer on the Warriors for now without Steph Curry as well. So what you're going to see is, as we play the clip a little bit here, is Buddy Heald gets the ball right heel, and Jalen Green is forced to, sorry, I meant Thompson, is forced to chase him over the top of the screen. Then Kaminga gets the ball right here in the wing slash slot position, and he shoots it right over Tari Eason and makes it. Now, I point out this clip, obviously a very simple clip, but it's something that Jonathan Kaminga is going to need to do if he wants to make it back into the starting lineup regularly with Stefan Wiggins. He's going to need to make and take those threes when they're up, when they're down, and when they're presented because his spacing on the court is really one of the biggest problems with him at the three position. Vic's next clip right here that we're getting into, Kaminga is going to be, I guess, more front and center in the action. He's on the strong side of the ball, and we're going to set Kyle Anderson in that Draymond Green position. And he's guarded by Reed Shepard right here. And honestly, their mismatch. I wish he could have just backed him down and scored. But instead, obviously, the Warriors love to run their offense, so that's what they're going to do right here. So what's going to happen is this a little bit of a complicated set right here where essentially Looney is going to try and set a screen for Buddy Heald as we have Jalen Green chasing Buddy Heald and also have Kaminga screen as well to get Buddy Heald even more open. Essentially two screens to get a shooter open, which definitely a player, a play that the Warriors really love to run for their shooters. And what it ends up doing is Tari Eason just switches onto Buddy Heald and they leave Jalen Green in a little bit of a tough position right here because Jalen Green didn't know that Tari Eason was just going to switch out onto Buddy Heald. So he's chasing all the way around when Obviously, if he knew that, he could have just sunk into the paint to guard Jonathan Kaminga a little bit better by playing a drop. So now, Jonathan Kaminga has a great angle, and obviously, Reed Shepard is not that hard to pass over when you're like as tall as Kyler Anderson. So he drops the ball in right here, and Jock Landale's in really no good position to actually contest this, this ball that Kaminga is about to put up here. And so he gets step on them, and they both overplay, and that's why you see them already basically out of the play right here. And Jonathan Kaminga is going to go up right here. And he actually ends up getting fouled as well uh, and making that shot. And I think that's a key point um, that Jonathan Kaminga brings to the Warriors, his ability to get fouled. Last night, the Warriors shot 50 free throws. They only ended up making like almost 60% of them, which we definitely need to improve on. But the fact that Kaminga can draw fouls and generate rim pressure is going to be something that the Warriors are going to need as we go through this season. And his ability to exploit matchups that are favorable is going to be really important as we go throughout the season. Now, another play right here where it's Kaminga is him obviously with the ball. His on-ball prowess is going to be really important for the Warriors this season as we really saw last night that when the Warriors lack ball handling, they can struggle. But breaking down people one-on-one -on -one is an important quality that the Warriors need to have. They do great when they have a plotting big man like, like Jock Landell here that you saw in the first half. But in the second half in overtime, it really switched. And you're going to see it throughout this film that the Warriors struggled a lot. And they struggled a lot because breaking down people one-on-one -on -one when everyone can guard is, is something the Warriors struggled to do. But Kaminga, he's a little different type of cat. He's easily able to blow by right here and evil, even able to get that layup over a big man, which is something that we need to see more of from Jonathan Kaminga if he's really going to have that all-star potential. This next play right here, Jonathan Kaminga is actually initiating the offense, and this is in overtime. The score is tied. It's one of the first plays. And as you see, as I pointed out, the Houston Rockets are probably playing their better defensive lineup versus the Warriors. They have no big man, no Jock Landale, no Al Alperin Shengun. Jabari Smith Jr. is actually the biggest player on the court right here. And so this is when you have to tell your players, hey, you got to beat your man one-on-one. -on -one. And that's 
what happens here. So this is a great screen, and they try to get Jalen Green onto Jonathan Kaminga. And Green's an athletic guy. Like, he's he was one of the top picks in the draft. He's a really good player. He didn't have a great game tonight. But Jonathan Kaminga is able to just back him down, get Thompson involved in play, and rise up over two players and make that shot. And that's more of what we need to see from Jonathan Kaminga this season, the ability to rise up over contested matchups and become that second shooter that the Warriors kind of need. Here we see him in a different kind of light. They're in a fast break play and Jonathan Kaminga is straight up running. And this is when his athleticism really shines. Jabari Smith Jr. is 6'11". Just look at how high that ball can get up. And look at Jabari Smith. Like he's in a great position to contest this. But Kaminga is athletic. He's huge. And he's able to put that exactly where Jabari Smith can't get that ball and where Kaminga can actually finish it. Now they're up four and Kaminga has sees blood in the water and wants to end it. He's guarded by Jabari Smith Jr. out here, and he gets running downhill. And that's, I think, something that Kaminga has developed over the offseason is this ability to run downhill and really stay in control. Right there, you saw him kind of stutter step around uh, the painted area. And that stutter step made Jabari Smith Jr. close the distance a little bit so that he could then blow by him again and get a better shot at the rim. And this ability of his allows him to get to the rim and end, ends with him finishing. And this was a big reason why the Warriors ended up winning. They obviously gave up a 31-point lead, but in the end were able to win it because of Jonathan Kaminga's athletic prowess, as well as his ability to exploit um, defensive matchups that maybe he couldn't in years past. If you guys want to see more Kaminga content or just want to see more Warriors content in general, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment below on what you think about the Warriors season. Thank you guys for watching.